Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So um, we've been doing a couple of uh, videos that are kind of interconnected a little bit, and uh, I don't know if this one's going to end up on a on a meatloaf or a roach coach or where it's going to end up. But uh, the first one in the in the kind of the the series um, is um, evaluating and moving a metalworking lathe, and then. Um, the next one after that that's kind of tied together is the lathe moving dolly. And then um, after that, I think there was a, a Roach Coach uh, episode about riggers wedges. Uh, these are these long tapered wedges uh, that are really useful for moving machinery around. And then this particular um, installment, wherever it ends up, either in a Roach Coach or a meatloaf, uh, we're going to make some uh, riggers pry Come on, Mr. Mr. Wizard. Um, we're going to make some riggers pry blocks. And these are just metal blocks um, that you can vary the thickness on um, so that you can use a pry bar effectively under a machine. Uh, a lot of times wood isn't really the right uh, material to put under there uh, to pry against. Sometimes it is. Um, and a lot of times you need a good hard uh, block uh, if you're sitting on a soft surface or um, anyway, sometimes you just need a hard block. And it's kind of an interesting project because it's along the lines of uh, uh, heel blocks for strap clamps on the mill. So you could use this technique to make some heel, heel blocks uh, for strap clamps. Uh, Tom over at uh, Tom's Techniques uh, made some real nice ones, uh, did a whole series on that. And if you haven't seen that, you should go check him out. That's uh, Tom's Techniques. and. Um, don't quite remember what he called them. I think he uh, called them step blocks or uh, something like that. Anyway, nice video uh, and a nice product in the end there. So go check that out. So this is along those lines, but uh, made a little bit differently and uh, and for really intended for a completely different purpose. So uh, uh, let's get going and uh, let's make these up and uh, and hope you enjoy the show. Talk to you soon. Okay, so here's what we're making today. Um, these are these uh, riggers block and uh, it's a multi-leaf uh, laminated block um, and um, these will be made of steel a quarter inch thick six millimeters um, and uh, there's the dimensions in Imperial um, what's interesting about this the way we're doing it here is uh, we're going to uh, make a special uh, assuaged pivot here um, no, no threads, uh, so it'll be a permanent assembly. So that's kind of the unique thing that we're doing here. Um, so hopefully, uh, the guys that need dimensions for this stuff, uh, I've shown this long enough on the screen that you can capture everything that you need to capture. Okay, so this is uh, um, what our uh, pivot is going to be here, and this is just a, a brass pipe nipple, and uh, it's one eighth uh, brass pipe and which is what so it's like 10 millimeter OD something like that uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to lop that off and that's going to form our pivot and we're going to flare the ends to retain it um, and this is fairly thick so uh, we may end up thinning that wall a little bit uh, we're going to cut the threads off and clean that end up uh, but we may thin it a little bit so it swages a little easier um, for our retention feature. And then the fallback is uh, I got some uh, some thin wall uh, brass tube here uh, that that would oops that's, this is the stuff here um, that's the same diameter basically as this here, uh, but it's real thin wall. It's 14 uh, 14 mil uh, excuse me um, 14 thousandths wall. Uh, 0.35 millimeter wall so okay anyway that's uh, that's gonna be our pivot so let's uh, let's go uh, do some work okay so here's the blanks here um, and these are just uh, uh, quarter inch thick uh, six millimeter plate um, and um, steel and they're <clears throat> I don't remember the numbers here they're yeah, they're two and a half, uh, 65 millimeters by uh, four inches, 100 millimeters. 
Um, it's kind of a uh, golden rectangle ratio there, so uh, um, uh, width to length. And uh, these are just saw cut edges. I, I just want to clean them up on the mill here um, real quick. We'll set a stop because we got a bunch of them here. Just kind of get it eyeballed in there. Do a little milling. All right, so we're uh, about 1,200 RPM, and that's a five ace uh, diameter end mill, five flute, uh, 16 millimeter diameter end mill, and we're just hand feeding here. One side uh, with the side of the end mill, um, just to get it square with the with the factory edge. But we got a few of them to do here, so it makes a little bit of sense to uh, switch to a tool that just has a little bit more uh, uh, surface area to it um, to do the opposite end instead of trading those out out of the vise a bunch of, a bunch of times. We'll just uh, dust them off with this. That's uh, 1600 RPM there. So we're just going to take a light skim. We don't want to take off any more than we have to. Okay, so we can see our high spots now. And um, I'm using the Rapid Traverse uh, just kind of as a high feed rate here. Let's dial in about 10,000, I don't know, about 8,000 there probably. I'm putting my hand up because I don't want the chips to go in my camera. Okay, so we're pretty close there. We just want to go to it cleans up. Um, let's do you know, about the same again, eight thousandths. I'm just going to let it feed this time. Hopefully, oops. hopefully you guys can still see a little bit in there. Oh yeah. So we swapped around here, uh, we're all sized up on our plates, and now we're going to do a little drilling. Um, we're going to use uh, uh, this kind of relatively new little stop. Um, Chris Stevens uh, out in uh, the UK, uh, near London, he uh, kind of shamed me into uh, <laughs> uh, uh, creating a little stop here um, so that I can retain my um, uh, absolute um, uh, zero that I established with the DRO. So this is uh, X, Y, zero here, and I can just fold this out of the way and shift into incremental if I need an alternate zero. Um, but what this does is if you set this up ahead of time, and all I have to do is uh, shift my DRO now, and I'll, I'll show that in a sec, uh, shift my DRO over to uh, um, absolute instead of incremental, then um, um, I can retain that zero for long periods of time. 
anyway, he and I kind of went back and forth about that. And uh, uh, I usually keep the Y for a long period of time. And he says, well, why don't you keep the X off of the end of the vise? And it's a good idea. Um, but I always like having a, you know, kind of a firm stop. Oops. Let me loosen that again. You know, to come up against here um, to, to have that. And then I can just pop that out of the way if, uh, if it's uh, in my way. And I just drilled and tapped in there and made a little block, so, you know, no magic there, so. Okay, so here what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, so right now you can see we're, we're in incremental mode on both the X and the Y, so what we'll do is we'll just shift that back to absolute, and that tells me where I am in relation to my absolute zero. We'll do the same thing here. Okay, so now when I get on, and we'll just go ahead and we'll just drive there. Okay, and then we'll go look at the, uh, with a pointer where we are on the, uh, on the actual part. All right, so let's just go ahead and verify just with a, uh, okay. So uh, I'll buy that for a quarter. Uh, Mr. Wizard approves there. Uh, looks like we're spot on. Okay. All right, so let's, I'm going to switch over to drilling here. Oh. Okay, well, that's my second favorite thing. That was the... Uh, the UPS guy, and uh, I believe, oops, my McMaster box here. Oh yeah, okay. So, so this is the uh, the handle for the. Uh, this is the handle for the uh, the vice. Uh, the vice mount, 5 ace 11 there. All right, we'll go put that in. and then, uh, oh yeah, this is another one for uh, something else I'll show you guys. All right, and then a, a two and a half millimeter uh, T handle that I needed. Now this is the, uh, the hole for our we're gonna make a pivot in the corner, like we showed on the drawing. Okay, so we've just poked a hole uh, in these plates, and um, this is kind of a pilot hole here. Um, this is our our pivot piece here, and it doesn't quite fit yet. Now we're gonna go through with a drill that, that should make this a clearance, just very slight. Uh, that's 404 thousandths, and the drill should be, it's actually measuring a little small. This is a, a, a Y drill inside of the letter set, and according to the chart, it's 404. Um, now, the reason I'm doing it in two steps like this is, you get a real accurate hole when you you take out most of it, uh, get close, and then come back uh, and just very lightly take out the, the last little bit. Uh, I don't have a reamer that, uh, that fits this here. And you see that's just taking out a few thousands there, and I get a really nice, uh, I'll actually, uh, I'll zoom in on that. Uh, this, this drill, <laughs> This one doesn't get a lot of use. In fact, it's probably hasn't been used in years, literally. Um, and it looks like we might need to ratchet up to the next size here. Um, well, you know what? It's a little swollen where those threads are. Let's uh, let's chop those threads off and uh, and then see if the see if you know it'd be nice to have a nice fit, right? So let me lop that off and then uh, we'll come back and try that again. All right, you can see that I got uh, doing that two-step process there, I got a pretty nice finish on that hole. But this still doesn't quite, doesn't quite go. So what I'm thinking is maybe that's out of round a little bit or something. So we're just gonna inch up to the, uh, you know, this was, this was a Y drill here. We're gonna ratchet up to the next one up. OK, 
Okay, so that was the next size up, and we got a pretty good, pretty good fit there. But this is our pivot, so we want it pretty good, um, and that's just the kind of fit I want. All right, so now we'll do a little, little chamfering here, uh, deburr those edges, and then we'll do our prep um, for our uh, retention feature. Okay, so we got the edges broken. Now we want to, we're going to put our uh, our little retention uh, seat in here, and uh, this is a 90 degree countersink here. A little lube on there and what we're going to do is we're just going to create an angled seat and I think what I want is about a third to a half way through the plate. Now let's go for half. It's actually looking pretty good right there. I should have measured that depth. A little, a little too much is better than not enough in this case. So, uh, all right, it's about halfway. So, what I'll do is run that into the countersink, and I'm going to zero my quill read out here, uh, so I, I can retain that depth. And then I'm going to do another one like this. It's a, a mirror image. Okay, so we got all of our, uh, our holes put in here and, um, and then countersunk for our retention feature. So now, now uh, before we get all excited and put it all together, uh, now's the time to put, uh, if you want to put a finish on these, uh, now's the time to do it because uh, you're not going to have a chance later on because it's kind of a permanent assembly once it's together. So let's go ahead and uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to belt sand them so they have a, a grained finish on them. And then uh, I'll cut the tube to length and uh, we'll, go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and assemble it. this thing off. Put our little sub chuck in here. And the reason for those people that didn't, don't remember is this chuck doesn't go oops, doesn't go uh, small enough uh, for little stuff like this. Alright. Clamp that in there. I'm just going to park this off. Let's see if I can get my, uh, oh yeah, I can get my hook scale in there. Okay, so what we're going to do here is set our, uh, our length here. And I'm fishing my, my hook rule up on, in there. Alright, I'll rotate this down until I'm close to the uh, parting blade. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So we're making the uh, we're making our tube uh, the same height as a stack of uh, of laminates, um, and um, so yeah. Anyway, pretty straightforward. All right, make sure I tighten that. Um, yep, in here. Okay, let's part that off.
Okay, so the next the next thing we're gonna do here it's a little uh, little different, um, but definitely interesting. So there's our tube. I'm gonna leave this hanging out a little bit. What I want to do, and I'm gonna use a different tool here. So what I got is I have a, a machinist triangular scraper here, and what I want to do is I want to instead of counter drilling that, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin that, uh, uh, I'm going to create kind of a, a, a flared uh, um, uh, opening there with the scraper here. And, uh, and I'm, it's basically like carving, uh, literally. So I'm going to reach in there and I'll just, uh, I'll just roll that edge over. And what I want to do is I want to thin this area here so that it swages real nice. All right. You can see that it's just peeling out of there, just nice as can be. So I can create, you know, any shape I want. And then just work it. It's kind of like whittling, you know. the other side. Um, well, I suppose I could tune the spindle off. So I'll smooth that a little bit. Um, we don't want any little stress risers or anything on that. I'll smooth it a little bit and then I'll do the other side and then there's one more step before we uh, do the assembly. All right so the last step here we've we've flared the ends and thinned them a little bit and prepped them for swaging and uh, the last thing I'm going to do here is just to make sure this is nice and soft, I'm going to anneal this thing and um, so that it swages real nice. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so uh, uh, red metals like uh, brass, um, if you want to anneal them, you, uh, you heat them up and you quench them. Uh, you don't let them air cool. Um, that way they end up nice and soft. All right, let's, uh, let's put that together and see what happens. Okay, so we're kind of ready here. I'm just gonna put this is just uh, white uh, assembly grease here. I'm just going to uh, put a little whisper of lube on this as, uh, as we put it together here. Kind of the uh, last chance to uh, get something in there. Too much. A little too exuberant there. All right, going the right way. Okay, so there's uh, there's our deal. All right, I think we're ready. What do I want here? Uh, I'm gonna, so this is a, a matching punch. This is 45, this is 45, everything's 45 degree angle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little lube on here because it ain't gonna hurt, I can tell you that. 
All right, well, let's see what happens here. Actually, you know what? Let me, uh, I'm gonna change the camera a little bit and zoom in on this so you guys can see it real good. Okay, I think we're ready. Cross your fingers. Hopefully uh, it doesn't split. Well, looks like it's going. So you see it's flaring out there nicely. We need another punch or something under the other side to uh, to help support it. So um, well, let's seat this one fully. Okay, and then I'll go find something to to stick in the other. You know, when we flip it over, uh, we that's subsurface now, so we need something to to back it up. Let me grab something else. All right, so I I had this little uh, this point. I got this at the flea market a while back. It's a it's too short for anything, uh, but it had a really nicely ground point on it, so I, of course I picked it up. All right, so that's going to be our, our little backup in this, in the already swage side. And then, uh, I need a little shim or something here. Let's see if this is enough. Uh, looks pretty good. All right, it's relatively level. Okay, so now the other side of our tube is backed up real nice. All right, and uh, let's uh, sway John here. Oh. A little, little lube, little lube, and here we go. Okay, so now, all right, that's not bad actually. There's a little bit of resistance, which is kind of what I want. Although, you know, obviously we can tighten that up anytime we want by just doing this some more. I think I'd, I think I'd rather start out a little snug here than, uh, than loose, so let's just go with that theory. Same thing, we'll kind of do a, uh, what do we call that, riveting action. Something like that. Okay. Let's clean this mess up here so we can all see that. All right. So, I don't know, I think that's pretty good. And now we can, yeah, it's nice and tight <laughs> out there. Okay, so there's our laminations. Yeah. There's our laminations, and we can create whatever step we want to create just by folding these things up. Okay, and then uh, the last step here is we're gonna uh, we're gonna knock some 45s on that uh, just to make it look a little nicer. Okay, but there's a uh, basically a homemade uh, rivet, a uh, hollow rivet. Okay, so here's kind of the last setup to do this. Uh, we're just going to put a little 45 degree chamfer on here like this, okay, on four corners. Um, so I got a little 45 block here to, so I can drop in there and, and um, well, let me just, I'll just take it out. So these are all clamped together. And this is setting my position here so that it repeats so I don't have to take measurements each time to get the chamfers all the same. Sometimes when you use a 45 block like this, when you, once you cut one of, one of these corners and that's down, that changes your height. So this uh, is just gauging on a, uh, a different area here that, uh, that, won't, um, that won't change. Okay, so uh, we're gonna come down and uh, we're just gonna knock like an eighth inch chamfer on these things and uh, go from there. Hopefully not. All right, so we're touching now. Okay, let's see, can you see that up there? No, that's all right. Let's try 50 thousandths. 
a little over a millimeter. Okay, so there we have the uh, the finished product uh, with the chamfers, and then we have our quarter inch or six millimeter laminations. So we can go as low as a quarter of an inch, and all the way up to uh, what is this uh, inch and a half, which is uh, the 38 millimeters, about something like that. Uh, it's made out of steel uh, with our brass uh, pipe fitting uh, suede pivot. So let's uh, let's go show how those uh, those get used uh, uh, by riggers. Okay, so we're back uh, we're back to our uh, our table that we're lifting here. So uh, here's the here's the problem is with this particular pry bar here. You can see that I, you know I got plenty of space to get something under there, but I really need something under the heel of this to get uh, a proper position. So that's where this guy comes in. Let's uh, let's just make a guess and say half inch. Okay, well there you go. All right, actually we could probably go a little more. Like so. All right, and then we got our Mr. Wedge. And then we slip that under like so. And then we can just keep going. Wedge goes under there a little more, etc., etc., etc. So, um, the, if you need to go higher than this, then you can put a piece of plywood or something under that if you want to keep going with it. But uh, this gives you a nice hard surface to. Uh, it's a little bit slippery, which uh, can be a bad thing uh, with a shiny uh, bar. Uh, but generally. Uh, um, there's such a high pressure point at that pivot that wood tends to crush and, uh, and deform uh, where you really want something steel under there. Anyway, that's how you use that. And uh, now I got one. And you guys can make your own if you want one. Thanks for watching. Well, like I always say, we can all recognize a really good idea when we hear it, so uh, I couldn't leave well enough alone with this thing. Um, a viewer uh, mentioned a, uh, an idea on, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. There was a lot of comments on this particular uh, thing here. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, add, I cut this off, and I'm going to add a, uh, a short section of round on here. And it's got a weld inside that I'm trying to, trying to clear there. There it goes. Um, and the reason for this and this will all be welded. So I can lock it in square and I can increment it around 90 degrees. Um, oops, no. Better weld it on. But when I come out to this round part here, now I can, I have infinite adjustability and then I can lock it down on that. Um, which I thought was just a, just a sweet idea and I just been thinking about it ever since I read that. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead. I had some heavy wall two inch tubing stick that together. So if I had my hand here, the arc is going that direction, 
and it, I don't know if you noticed, but I brought my hand over here, so that allows me to run that rod down short and not, uh, not burn my fingers. Little trick. Okay, so now we've got the ultimate in adjustability here. First of all, we got the uh, device that can do all kinds of gyrations here. Uh, you know, every which way, uh, which is kind of nice. And then we have the square shank here, so we can you know, hold this thing out of the way real easily. Or, you know, index it at 90 degree positions if we want. Um, I haven't fully explored all the, uh, all the possibilities. Okay, that's nice and low there. That's actually not a bad spot. <laughs> okay, so there, there's a pretty good one. Nice and low. Um, then, um, and I don't, and I apologize because I don't remember who, who suggested this. I got a, quite a few comments on this project and uh, I don't remember uh, who it was, so I don't want to get it wrong. So I'm just going to thank whoever that was that suggested uh, having this thing round on the end. So now what I have is I basically have, you know, infinite adjustability here on the round. Um, you know, I don't know why you'd want it like that, but um, it gives, actually, you know what, it's kind of neat because I can pull it out to the round and then I can just flip it around and shove it back in uh, so I don't have to take it out and hold that weight up. I don't know, it sounds good anyway, right? But uh, there it is, I think. We're going to call this one uh, Dead Dog Done. Okay, so you guys saw the uh, UPS box show up um, the other day, or in this same video, and this was the other handle that was uh, <clears throat> that was in it. Um, and you can see that this is the same handle as that, um, although it doesn't have that same logo, but that's okay. Anyway, uh, once again, Chris Stevens uh, uh, suggested the idea of having instead of. <clears throat> just a fat uh, <clears throat> socket head cap screw here and an L key uh, to secure that. Just, just why don't you just add separate handles? Well, um, I don't have a good excuse why uh, that's the case. Um, this smaller head here allows us to come up a little bit higher, but that's kind of a minor consideration. Um, I do have to fetch this when I want to use it um, but I think you know in the interest of uh, trying things out and uh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and use this handle here so I don't need any tools to put this on and take it off now the only drag here is this head is larger in diameter than um, than this seat uh, for that socket head screw so we're gonna take this apart take it over to the lathe and just turn that down a little bit so it's the same diameter as that so that it sits down in that little counter bore. And then we're gonna test drive this for a while and uh, we'll either like it or we won't like it. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna turn this thing down. Uh, we'll make it the same diameter as that, which is, I don't know, what's the neural part, 740, about 740. And then the, uh, the depth, will be uh, 260 and we'll make it uh, 275 deep or the shoulder 275 deep what I say for dang it 740 write that down 740 by 275 okay all right so 
let's calibrate a shoulder here. Just gonna come up and touch it without the machine running. Okay, and set my Trava dial. All right, and then um, let's see what we're what diameter we have to start with here. Nine oh six. Like that. All right. Get my tools uh, already set. See how it looks. Okay, so let's uh, put this little guy back together. Turn it out of the way. There's one little issue. Like I said, so it didn't quite come up as high, but I don't think that's a big deal. This doesn't swing past, but I don't think that's a big deal either because you just need a quarter turn. All right, locks up good. All right, well, we're gonna test drive that. And uh, anyway, thanks Chris for uh, getting me off my ass and, uh, and changing that around. Uh, we'll try it out and see how it works.